Hey there, Ohara here. And today we have an update on the 10.1.5 builds that I was testing. So we have four builds today. Jumping straight into it, we have the Flashing Claws plus Ursox Fury. This build is super simple, definitely the simplest to play out of all the builds. Maintain five Thrash Stack Bleed, and then inside of Incarn, you're just Mangle Raising, Mangle Raising. The, the main question in this build is how many Iron Fur Stacks? I guess ask this question a lot on stream. What is the correct number of Iron Fur Stacks I need to have before I can spend the excess rage on raise? This question is actually um, kind of a you question. Can you survive with four to five stacks of Iron Fur? Can you survive with two to three stacks of Iron Fur? So if you feel like you can survive with less stacks of Iron Fur, then you can spend all of the excess rage on Raze. Generally speaking though, for me, when I do eight to 10 mob pulls, I think I would say I feel pretty comfortable with five stacks of Iron Fur, four to five, five, four to five stacks of Iron Fur, for most packs there are certain packs where you know there are big tank busters say for example some of the trogs in oldman that do the diseased bite or freehold mobs melee very hard on those packs maybe you want to have a bit more you want to go up to six stacks six to seven stacks of iron fur before you spend ex excess rage on rays um but again this is a very subjective question. I've had pulls where I do eight to 10 mobs and I'm perfectly fine with three stacks of iron fur. I've had pulls where eight to 10 mobs again and I need five to six stacks. Uh, ultimately, it just comes down to how well do you know the dungeon? Do you know which mobs melee very hard or not necessarily melee, but have very big fizz hits uh, compared to other mobs? Um, say, for example, the casters in Oldman that cast Stone Bolt. Uh, Iron Furs won't help with that, so maybe you want to press Raise more for the Absorb Shields. So again, um, really just comes down to, do you know the dungeon? Do you feel comfortable with lower stacks of Iron Fur? If so, use it all on Raise. Raise gives you massive uh, Absorb Shields from Ursoc's Fury, so... The trade-off is definitely there. I think ultimately you should be fine four to five stacks on average. It should be pretty good. Okay. Jumping into the next build, we have Twin Moonfire plus Ursox Fury. Twin Moonfire plus Galactic Guardian is definitely more of a pain to maintain now. And it is more of a skill thing now. However, the trade-off is obviously you have quite a bit more damage playing Twin Moon for Galactic Guardian. It could be anywhere from 15 to 20k more DPS on you know five to eight mob pulls. So it is it is definitely a good chunk of damage. I would not uh, I would not overlook this. On some of my dungeons, I think Twin Moonfire was upwards of 30k DPS, but again, buffed by augmentation, so. It's definitely a little bit weird. Uh, but I would say for sure you can get 20k DPS out of Moonfire. It obviously will depend on how big you pull though. So generally speaking for this build, what I did was to play it safe, I just maintained my Thrash, right? Inside of Incarn, I would Mangle Raise, Mangle Raise. I would kind of ignore Moonfire a bit. Um, but prior to doing that, what you want to do is you want to Moonfire everything up first. You know, use your Bark Skin, use your Rage of the Sleeper if you have to. Use your SI, whatever you need to, to survive the pull. Apply your Moonfire, then press Incarn, and then do Mangle Raise, Mangle Raise. So essentially, get your dots up. Um, that includes Moonfire and your Thrash Bleeds, then Incarn and Mangle Rays, Mangle Rays. That I found to be the most uh, damage. That's how you min-max the most. 
if you can do so. But obviously, I would not hold on to Incarn if you feel like you're going to die or if you don't have Bark Skin available to do so. Just press Incarn and it's fine. Ignore the Moonfire, survive first. And as you get better, you can start, you know, cheating a couple of GCDs here and there um, to Moonfire first before Incarning. And then outside of Incarn, um, it's essentially just use your Rage on Iron Fur because you will be spending quite a few GCDs pressing Moonfire. And because you're doing that, you're not able to raise as much or thrash as much. So the shield you get from Ursox Fury will be less. In other words, you do want to have more Iron Fur stacks in general while we'll playing this build as compared to the Flashing Claws build. Okay. Next build, Flashing Claws plus Twin Moonfire. Uh, this is an even more offensive build. So as we're going through these builds, it's getting more offensive. You're dropping defense for more offense. This one, pretty much the same concept. You're pressing, you're, you're maintaining your dots. Incarn, Mingle Raise, Mingle Raise, same thing. You do not have the Ursox Fury uh, shielding. So you will have to be pressing more frenzied regions. In my opinion, I don't like this build actually too much because the the additional GCDs spent pressing frenzied regen make it already uh, or make it even worse because of the GCDs you need to spend maintaining moonfire. So the additional GCD spent pressing Frenzy Regen just feels very, very bad. On top of maintaining your Moonfire, maintaining your Thrash, you want to Mangle Raise. So it's just kind of kind of weird. Not too big of a fan of it, but it is more damage. Now, lastly, uh, this one is a bit, uh, surprisingly a bit better. It is more damage than the previous one, which is the Flashing Claws plus Twin Moonfire. It is better because of the Loons Favored. So if you are on top of maintaining Moonfire, you actually get a lot of healing from the Loons Favored in this build. And that does actually free up a couple of GCDs um, to mangle raise more. And then on top of that, you don't have to maintain five stacks of Flashing Claws. Uh, so this build actually did feel pretty good. The downside is obviously you're losing 4% DR from Rend and Tear. So you might need to be a little bit more, uh, you might need to pay a bit more attention on dangerous pulls when playing this build, uh, on those tank busters specifically. You have a lot of sustain with this build because of Loon's Favored, but you don't have too much aside from just frenzied regions and your defensive spells being Barkskin SI for the tank busters. So you want to really pay attention to that. Okay, so that's pretty much the recap. I want to say in general, um, for sure, Flashing Claws felt the best defensively. I would say the Twin Moonfire plus Ursox Fury also felt really good. If you want to be a little bit more lazy, which is what I tried as well, you can drop the one Twin Moonfire point and you can put it into Flashing Claws. And with this build, I pretty much kind of just ignored Moonfire and I used Galactic Guardian sometimes on single target, three target, you know, low number of targets. One to three targets, I moonfired everything. Bosses, you know, moonfired obviously. Use your Galactic Guardian procs. And this one point in Galactic Guardian was actually a lot of damage. So this build is kind of like an in-between. I think it is a nice, a nice balance if you want a bit more damage. This one point in Galactic Guardian gave me about 10k more DPS. Uh, 10 to 11k. So... It is very, very strong, okay? Very, very strong. And then 
for these builds, you get probably uh, 20k more DPS playing Twin Moonfire as compared to, again, the Flashing Claws. Uh, with Flashing Claws and Twin Moonfire, this build was probably something like 25, 25k DPS more. And then the full Moonfire wasn't too much more. I think it was like 25k to 30k. So a lot of this is going to just be dependent on how well you maintain your Moonfire. If you want to do more damage, you definitely can. You have that option. All right. That's pretty much going to be it for the video. If you guys have additional builds, I haven't tested Lunar Beam yet. Somebody did point out that Lunar Beam gives you 15% increased mastery. Uh, for me, mastery, I pretty much just viewed it as a defensive thing, but obviously mastery has more value now because of raise. Mastery does buff raise damage. So I will be trying to test that out a bit more. If anybody have, if anybody has tested Lunar Beam already, um, with you know maybe Lunar Beam with Rage of the Sleeper, trying to fit in as much damage as you can in the 10 second window. Uh, if you have good results, definitely let me know. I would gladly like to take a look and try it out myself. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.